Hey, it's Dread, and uh, we're gonna do another one of these this time about interactive music in games. Um, before we get into it, just want to say thanks everyone for watching this. I'm just kicking this uh, channel thing off. This is what episode nine or ten, something like that, and um, so it's just getting started. And I appreciate everyone who's been watching. So thank you. And uh, if you have anything that you know I've worked on that you're interested in hearing about, I'd be happy to talk about it. Please leave a comment if you feel like. Uh, like making a request. Okay, uh, the reason I wanted to talk about this right now is because I, I just finished being a judge on a panel for the for the Dice Awards for the music category. Um, I'll show you, I'll put a link into the to the Dice Awards thing here and you can see all the different judges that were taking part in this and I was asked to do it. Having not really been paying attention to game music for the last few years, I've been immersed in yeah, immersed, see what I did there. I've been immersed in AR and VR stuff for the last few years, so I haven't really been paying attention a lot to what's going on in games. But the last game that I worked on that shipped in 2019 was called Diner Dash Adventures with uh, Glue Mobile, who later became part of EA. And um, when I did that game, we did everything in FMOD, and it was pretty elaborate, for especially for a mobile game. The reason I bring this up now is because in reviewing all of these titles, it was around a hundred or so titles that were submitted to us. One thing I did notice was the strange lack of interactivity in the music all around. I mean, there were a, a few high profile titles. I won't get into the actual names of the games, but there were a few that had some really nice adaptive music stuff going on. What I mean by that is, there's a scene happening, and depending on the player's decision, that scene will change. So the music should probably change along with whatever the player decided to do. That's sort of the beauty of interactive audio and adaptive game music. Tremendous lack of that in almost every title I saw this year. I had kind of made the assumption that since I was last paying attention to games, this would have improved. I see so many job titles with Wise, and when I say Wise, W-W-I-S-E, Wise, which is game audio middleware. It's becoming a standard here. The other one is FMOD, which we're gonna look at today. So I see so many job listings with Wise requirements, like you must know Wise. Maybe that's for mostly sound designers, so who's implementing the music in all of these? I know who's doing it on some of the bigger teams. Um, maybe those jobs are just, I don't know. I don't know what's happening to them, but I don't hear very much adaptive music. I heard lots of loops going on for a long time and I hear loops kind of changing, really awkward transitions. And I don't mean to pick on anybody. I'm not gonna name any names, but if you're submitting your game for the Dice Awards to be considered for best music and you don't even have transitions between one cue and the next that make any kind of sense. What are you doing submitting your title to be considered? I mean, that's got to be, you know, the basic level of this putting music into a game. I'm sorry if I'm getting up on my high horse here, um, but it just feels like we shouldn't have to be dealing with that anymore. Games have surpassed that a long time ago. and. There are games that I've been involved in where I really wanted to add that functionality and even said that I would do it all and implement it all and had developers turn me down. I know that's part of the industry. I know that's part of, of the gig. So sometimes there's nothing that the composer um, can do about it. That's life. I think we can all do better. And I've been advocating for this for a long time. In fact, today I just got an email from AudioWise or Audio Connect saying that Wise is now free for indies with no restrictions. It used to be like a 200 sound limit or something like that, sound event limit. But now it's it's totally free for indies and FMOD is also free for indies. It's really no reason you shouldn't be doing something with middleware. Down off of the high horse. And now I'm gonna get into what I did on Diner Dash Adventures. I've got a few different little music events that I wanted to show. And the first one is the simplest. Um, so we'll get into that. This is from Diner Dash Adventures. 2019 came out on all mobile platforms. Um, and you might think, oh, mobile game. Yeah, it probably isn't very interesting with all the audio. Well, just wait till you see all these events that we put in FBOT. Okay, here we are. And uh, here is this session in FMOD, FMOD Studio. You can download FMOD Studio for free. I'm not advocating FMOD versus Wise. They're both great. Um, and just so you have an understanding of how it was working in the game, 
the game was using Unity as its main game engine, and we were hooking up all of these events into Unity. We had one engineer that we collaborated with, and we gave them all of our parameters for all of the different changes in the music. That person would put those parameters into code inside of Unity. Okay, so we're gonna look at what we're calling the Map Music Avatar Queue. So this is where you can go and decide what you want to uh, change for your avatar. You can buy t-shirts and different costumes, hats, sunglasses. Um, one of the designers, actually I think this was Tom Hall's idea. Tom Hall, who was at Glue at the time, but he was one of the folks from id Software back in the day. Um, Tom's a great, great, person and I love collaborating with him and we've worked on several games together. But I think this is his idea because it came from a Nintendo game and I can't remember which one he was referring to. This menu comes up and it's got tabs and so the idea was if you clicked on different tabs different elements would come into the music. Real subtle elements that would just kind of slightly change to let the player know they were on a different tab. Really simple, this is the most simple way of creating interactive music, and I just call it layering theory, I guess. Call it what you like. So, I'm gonna play a little bit of it. So what you're hearing here is this map music avatar. That's the one that's playing now, and you can see this blue line up here is a loop region. So that's just telling FMOD to keep playing this over and over and over again. Okay, now you're seeing these other ones light up down here. We're not hearing them because if you look over here, you'll see that they're faded down. Okay, so FMOD is playing them, but it's not amplifying them. So we're hearing just the avatar right now. Now I've created three different parameters, one for the bongos, one for the bossa beat, and one for the dance party beat. So, at its most simple, this map music avatar doesn't change, and we just add these elements to it that were created in the same uh, BPM. So I'll bring in the bongos. So there's the bongos, and there they are at full, full volume. You can see our automation here. When I change this up here, this red line, that'll go up and down. That's just our volume, right? So I could tell the programmer, here, just set it to 1.0 when you want the bonk was in. And whenever the game was going along and someone hit the hats tab, for instance, in the avatar menu, uh, that would tell FMOD to raise the bongos map parameter to 1.0 and up that volume would go. It would go very slightly. You notice it's moving slowly. See how it's going slowly? It's not immediate because I've put in other ADSR functions in order for that volume to kind of creep up and down and, and not go just psh, psh, back up and down. So it's kind of a nice fade. Um, so that's the bongos. Let's hear the bossa beat. Our bossa beat. Now you'll also notice that these are little small audio sections here. Um, I, I knew I could just repeat them, so there was no need to create an audio region as long as the map music avatar region. So I just created a small, looks like two bar, four bar phrase, something like that, four bars, and then just repeated it so I could just copy and paste it all the way through here doesn't add more files to the overall FMOD session. It just creates the same version of it, but it doesn't increase the footprint of the audio, if that makes sense. So it's a lot more efficient to use a smaller file and repeat it than it is to use a bigger file. Mobile game, gotta keep things small. All right, so that's the boss and beat map. Now we have the dance party. And uh, I think that was for a tab for fancy clothes or something like that, like you were going to a dance party. So those were our basic layers. And it never changed the main cue here, we just added percussion. There's a simple, simple version of layering interactive music in FMOD. So 
that's a really simple way to do it. Very effective and a very subtle, nice effect to have in your game. You can imagine that you can do something more with this. Let's say you wanted to have confrontation music and you wanted your explorer music. Maybe that's just a big pad, right, as you're exploring. And all of a sudden there's a confrontation and you, you want to bring in some drums and make it a little bit more intense. So add a layer. Then let's say you want to add some guitars on top of it, make it a little more intense. Let's just add another layer. And then you can just keep adding layers to make that whole scene kind of come up and come down. You're just creating a shape of the intensity of the music to come up and down, but it's all interactive. Then you can tweak more from there. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about how to do that. All right, this has gone on for a bit, so I think I'm gonna cut this off, make this part one. I've got the second half of this, uh, which gets into a lot more detail about playheads and FMOD and jumping around and randomization. So that'll be part two into part one. Thanks again so much for watching. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I really appreciate that people are watching. And uh, if you want to like, subscribe, do that business, you know where to go. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next part two next week.